The Magic Show is brought to you by StarCityGames.com, and check this out. On August 13th and 14th, the StarCityGames.com Open Series comes to Richmond, and this event is going to be huge. We're talking hundreds of players, over $14,000 in cash prizes, at least 18 players qualify for the Charlotte Invitational at the end of the year. Live coverage all day long, courtesy of SCG Live, and as much Magic the Gathering as we can pack into one weekend. So make plans to join StarCityGames.com in Richmond, and we'll see you there. Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of the Magic Show Update. Yep, as of right now I'm trying something a little different. You know, I've got this awesome set, I've got a crew here helping me film, and I think it's time to bring you more Magic Show. Perhaps with a slightly shorter run time, but I think it's time to give this a whirl. So you ready to talk about my first three selections for the Hall of Fame? Let's go. And we'll begin by why this program even exists. It does so, as the page states, to enshrine the most significant and influential competitors in the game. Now, before I go any further, this statement alone should tell you a lot about what the Hall of Fame really is. It's not a hall of stats. You don't reach a certain number of points or wins or percentages, and then you're automatically in there. This is important for reasons we'll see later. Next up is eligibility. Who can get in this thing anyway? Those on the ballot need to be playing for 10 years, have at least 100 pro points, and not be currently suspended by the DCI. Boy, that last point sure is awkward. Just ask Tomoharo Saito or Guillaume Wafo Tapa. Anyway, the Hall of Fame features a collection of superstars with the biggest and brightest names in the game. Finkel, Kais, V, Maher, Nassif, Kibler, Turian, Bueller, Rule, Ruel again, Karsten, Levy, Castle, the list goes on and on. You have a selection of amazing people, and it is created by two separate but not equal voting groups. First, you have the Players Committee. This is every active player with over 100 pro points. They all get a ballot and may all participate. This is a true, clear line to cross in order to get a vote. Next up is the Selection Committee, a group that doesn't need to meet a necessary criteria per se, but is instead chosen by WOTC for various reasons. Reporters, including yours truly, are on it, including longtime judges, administrators, and contributors to Wizards. However, the Players Committee ballot isn't weighed the same as the Selection Committee's ballot. This, as you can imagine, is a point of contention, as counting as one-third of a voter isn't the most highly sought position. Worst yet, the player committee hasn't actually done a lot to get players in, but has rather done a lot to try to keep players out. I mean, look, Bram Snepfangers almost got derailed last year due to a rounding error, mostly caused by the fact that the players committee wasn't as high on him as everybody else in the selection committee was. With that said, there's a bit of controversy in what constitutes a selection committee pedigree and what it takes to get one. This to me sounds like two things. First, sour grapes. Seriously. Two, it's just Joes versus pros all over again. The argument is that only those with enough experience and enough times covering the PT have benchmarks for selection committee status. And to that, I call BS. I don't look a gift vote in the mouth. I want to select the most worthy, deserving, and giving members of the game. I want to tell everyone about it in every way I can, and I want to make sure that those I choose are stewards of the game today and in the future. And honestly, I'm just a fanboy. I want Finkel and Zvi at every pro tour just as much as you guys do. And the guys I vote for this week, I want them in as well. First up is Shuhei Nakamura. Much like, and yes I'm going there, Kai, Finkel, and Nassif, I think Nakamura is an absolute shoe in a former player of the year, a 400 plus pro point holder, a man that is in freaking credible at Magic and is a constant source of amazing play and dedication. I've had many conversations with Shuhei and let me tell you, he is an amazingly humble guy. In my line of work, you get a chance to see the best in the world battle. And let me tell you, this guy is crazy, crazy good at what he does. To not include him on your ballot is just incorrect. And for those pricks who don't because they don't want to give anyone 100%, shame on you. Next up, I'm voting for Steve O'Mahony Schwartz. I'll admit to never have seen him play. However, the stats don't lie. Three Pro Tour top eights, including a win, 10 GP top eights in which he won four of those, 237 pro points. As told by those in the know, he taught the pro tour how to draft. Buddies with another name you might have heard of, John Finkel. One of the most incredible reputations in the game and traveled around the world to battle before it was cool. Countless buddies have jumped into his offense and he gets my vote and I'm hoping it pushes him over the top. 
My last vote for today is Suyoshi Ikeda. Are you aware that this man has over 300 pro points? That's much like the 3,000 hits club in baseball. They're so good, you better have a damn good reason not to let them in. Beyond that, you've got a guy who almost won Pro Tour Austin last year, losing to Hall of Famer Brian Kibler. Four Pro Tour top eights, six GP top eights, and 59 Pro Tours under his belt. You don't have that kind of stamina or put up those types of finishes by accident. Here's hoping that he makes it. So who's left on my ballot? Find out tomorrow as we take a closer look. Until next time, Magic players, this is Evan Irwin, tapping the cards so you don't have to. I always like the fatties.